Well, hello, my friend. Let's check out what's new with Wraithbinder, the multiplayer hack and slash game where when you die, you're bound to the person that kills you. A game I've been developing for a little bit, and it's a spin off of the Songbringer RPG series of games that I'll eventually make a series, which is only one game so far. So check us out. One new thing this week, which is actually pretty a, a pretty big thing, is that I've quantified um, grenades. So when you start off, you have um, zero matter points. Matter points are basically just like mana points, except that you start with zero of them. And you earn them by hitting stuff and harvesting matter. So when you hit these stone um, entities right here, you're basically harvesting matter. See that little white plus five above my head? That's some matter I'm gaining. And then I've got a white bar where it's filling up, right? I started with, with zero and now it's filled up. It actually just caps itself off at 100 right now, except that you can keep gaining matter points. Like you can get like 150, 200 matter points, etc. Uh, maybe I will add a cap though. Like your player will have like a certain amount of matter points that they can they can get as a cap, right? Like you can only have, uh, you know, 100 mana points or matter points. And uh, then later, um, maybe you can get some upgrades you buy on your ship or you can you can have more matter points. Like now you can have 150 or so, whatever. But the point is that it quantifies now like how many grenades you can throw out. Because when you throw a grenade, um, it uses matter points to do that. So in that sense, it's kind of like a mana point. So you're using it to do your abilities and things like that. And um, this way, as a player, you can't just go around and spam grenades. So if you have a ton of grenades, you can't spam them. And there's another way I could have done that. And that's it. I could have added item pickups. Like you could run around the map and go and find an item. But I just found this to be more interesting. This whole concept of you're harvesting matter to use abilities and um, and what else will it be? There's more to it. Anyways, it can be like, it's almost like you're gaining experience too because when you gain matter points from hitting enemies as well. So if I hit an enemy, you know, technically blood is coming out of them and you're gaining matter from that. Um, and then of course buildings are the same thing too. You have to use matter to build your buildings. So if I want to build a bridge right here, oh, my team already won. Let's go. Cool. Let's see if it actually goes back to the ship this time. Oh, this week I started this uh, whole recap menu too. This is just really rough sketch, but this is like uh, I had zero kills. There's no columns yet, but this, the numbers are kills, deaths, assists, and I haven't been tracking assists yet either. So I need to add some columns, make this whole thing graphical, add some uh, player images and things like that, and add more stats too, like total damage dealt and etc. Stuff you kind of would see in a MOBA, I would expect to see some some of that kind of like uh, recap of what exactly happened in this match. So I'm gonna go ahead and get hit done right here, and let's see if it takes me back to the ship this time. I fixed that this week, hopefully. <laughs> Come on. You can do it. Oh, I don't know. What's going on? Killed it. So I've been working on some other stuff this week, which is really neat. Let's go ahead and kill um, Wraithbinder. I think this will do it. Yeah, I did it. Sweet. All right. Uh, the other thing that's really new and neat to me as a as a developer this week is I improved the load speed by 300% or more and um, here's some proof in the instruments check us out so before load time was about 11 and a half 12 seconds I've seen this 13 to 15 seconds even before um, because there's so many models that have to be loaded first because every single player is unique they have different body parts that make up a, the different armor, different swords, different hair, everything makes up a model at runtime. It's procedural animation system. Uh, so, but check it out. This is the new load, four seconds, right? Four seconds used to be 12. Boom, 
This is huge. So the the concept I discussed in a video previous, but the concept is basically just we don't need to wait um, for all the models to load. We only need to load the models that are on screen and that we're going to use right away. So all of them, all these models that are on screen here, these these ground entities, this turret here, these pillars, this healing stone, these stairs, all that has to be loaded. We also have to load the couple frames that the player is going to use right away in the first few seconds of gameplay. And that is the kneeling animation where they teleport in in a kneeling position and they stand up. And then they do this idle animation right there where they're idling. All those are now considered priority zero animations. So I've added this little thing to the end of my... Um, animation one-liner string right so this is the kneel animation first we have to load invisible that's priority zero uh because at first the player is invisible in fact empty is already been loaded by another thing so that's not really that important but kneel gets loaded see that p0 at the end here of the line that means um that it's a priority zero animation it has to be loaded right away before we even do the opening curtains so kneel and idle are all priority zero. And then after that, it will load lower priority items um, in the order that they're listed here in the uh, this file here that describes the players. So, um, so run would be priority one, melee two would be priority two, melee would be priority three, etc. cetera. Uh, so what happens is in model, Basically, it's a kind of a, a background loading system. You could call it a lazy loading system. You could call it whatever. But basically, what it's doing is it um, when we when we go to cache the models, it actually schedules the loading of that model. So we've got a model config which describes the model that has to be loaded, and then we've got a priority level now, and we've seen that uh, applied in the player, and also it gets applied in other places, like it increases the priority of the config if it's something that's off screen so if it's off screen boom it gets this really high priority it doesn't have to be loaded oh and by high i mean zero gets loaded first a higher priority gets loaded later i know it's kind of opposite but i just this that made the math work a lot better i still called it a priority because it didn't make sense to call it anything else so but anyways um then it goes through and it basically just schedules the load it pushes it back pushes back that config into a vector of vectors of configs and then later it goes and loads all those scheduled so um, the first time it calls load scheduled it um, does a, a maximum tick time of zero which means that it can go and load everything at le priority level zero so load scheduled gets called once for everything that has a zero priority and all those zero priority things get loaded straight up right away before we even do the opening curtains and in fact we can see that here in um, log.txt well i probably need to simplify this a little bit or turn off logging for model uh here these initial models so anyways um check it out see is how it's loading all these priority zero things this is tick zero we're seeing it the very first number here in the line is the tick uh, then we've got the name of the model it's loading and then we've got how fast it loaded so it's all these models are loading like three or four milliseconds we get to the end of all this though and see it loaded 551 models in about two seconds and then it does its opening curtains and the game's ready to play so we've got only two seconds of model loading that happens right there whereas before we had about so maybe 10 to 11 seconds of model loading it just loaded everything and now we're just loading exactly what needs to be on screen and and is priority zero right away and then it goes into the really nice and beautiful part of this whole system where it's basically just taking a certain chunk of time each tick and going and, and applying that to loading some models in the background, things that are going to be loaded later. Um, and then so we basically just have set that amount of time right now to the seconds per tick times, uh, well, an eighth. So basically an, an eighth of each tick gets allocated to loading models. But I need to make this more fine-grained because right now each model is taking three or four milliseconds. And that basically means that uh, it goes over the amount of time that it needs. So check it out. Like uh, the first time it goes and loads a model in the background, it took four milliseconds, but it really wanted to take three milliseconds maximum, right? So I need to basically improve the granularity of how much it can load per um, 
per tick, which basically just means I need to go into this cache models method, which happens, which loads 64, it loads the model file and then applies 64 different um, shading and rotations. Um, and so that basically, I need to improve the granularity there and basically just create some sort of state machine so that basically that it can remember where it was in those 64 different models and load just a few of those each each time we call load scheduled so that'll improve the granularity layer but that for now this system is working pretty well um, so basically what what we're seeing here in this line of in this function here is load scheduled is looping over all those loads and they're the vector of vectors is basically organized by priority level so priority level zero is a vector of configs priority level one is a vector of configs and we go and through those configs and then we cache each model and then we check them out the amount of time that it took to load that model. And then we say, all right, if we hit our amount of time, we're done, break and allow other systems to run. So what we get after all that is boom, this super much faster loading system that loads, that's so pleasing to me as a developer to see my game load that fast because I'm hitting the reef, I'm hitting run like five times a minute sometimes and to wait 10 seconds 12 seconds each time i do that is a is oh it just gets to me 12 seconds is long enough as a programmer for you to go hmm what was i thinking about five minutes ago oh yeah i should eat breakfast soon you know what i mean you get distracted after 12 seconds but when your game loads in three or four seconds you don't get distracted as much for me at least as a developer so this is so pleasing oh my gosh i'm so excited to be developing now with this little faster loading game and it's much better for players too so but oh i forgot to show you what uh, the other thing here let's go ahead and i'm going to reload we're going to see it load all fast but then i'm going to turn on the well, i actually hopefully I, it caught my there we go cool caught my button press there i pressed the y key and it showed up this little thing here check it out see model the model system is using it. We've got the we we got the ability to see how much the model system is currently using. So we've got all these different systems here listed on the right of the screen: move, collision, attack, health, model, render. Oh, we crashed. Oh, that didn't destroy bug. I'll I'll get that fixed. It's not actually a bug. It's just an assertion failure that I I need to fix. But anyways. See, we're, we're loading 200 milliseconds, 270, 325 milliseconds applied to each model load. Um, so as I'm running around here, it's loading all these models in the background. And um, and then eventually it's loaded all its models and then that model will drop down to just one millisecond. It's not even using any more time to tick its models, um, which is super awesome. And basically this is kind of how open world games would go ahead and and apply this sort of no load time you know what i mean basically this is how no load times would would work in a game you you've got um you've got the ability to schedule all the loading of all your assets your, mo your models your uh audio files music see their models drop down to 20 milliseconds it's probably loading some tiny models now they'll drop down to one millisecond here for soon been slain but there you have it some new systems with we uh, started this video talking about grenades and how the fact that it uses matter points and um, and oh also the mini map's been uh, improved a tiny bit the mini map now has a north um, indicator so as I rotate the screen I always know which way is north and I'm actually gonna add some screen uh, brackets showing where the screen the actual current screen is on the minimap that's gonna be nice and then we've also got the um, animated uh, um, team members and opponents up in the top left that is a little bit improved too I improved the graphics up there this looks a tiny bit better and of course it's got the matter points too so those are all the new gameplay features and then we've also got this really cool technical feature where a game loads 300% faster ho so thanks for watching this video, and we'll talk about Wraith Biner some more later, yeah? See ya.